Spiders have a bad reputation for being creepy, but most species you will encounter are completely harmless, and all of them are beneficial and serve important roles in the ecosystem. I will start this video with one of the most commonly seen local spiders, the cross orb weaver, which is found in both North America and Europe. They start life hatching in a group of tiny yellow and black spiderlings, huddling together unless disturbed. When they are ready to leave the crush, they will cast out a line of silk that catches the wind and acts as a parachute or kite that allows them to drift away on the breeze. This is called ballooning. They are very vulnerable to predation, and most will be eaten by birds and other predators before reaching adulthood. Once they find a place to settle down, they will construct the classic orb weaver web and begin their lives of filtering insects from the air and growing bigger. As they grow, the bright yellow fades to orange and the black marking changes to brown and white patterns along the abdomen. They develop stripes down the legs as well. A mature adult female can be quite dark orange in color and fairly large, though still completely harmless to humans. Here is an impressive example of a large adult getting into what I call the classic spider pose in her web. Orb weavers rebuild their webs every couple of days. The size of the web corresponds to the size of the spider because they measure each line using their legs, so as they grow, the spaces between the lines on their webs get bigger. This is another type of orb weaver commonly found around here in low growing plants and bushes. A spider that is more unusual in shape is the goldenrod crab spider. They live among flowers and can range in color from white to yellow to pink depending on the flowers they are living in. As you can probably infer from their living spaces, they prey on pollinating insects such as flies and bees. Those long front legs are strong and have rows of spines to grip their prey. This one has caught a pollinating wasp. Possibly the cutest local spider, the zebra jumping spider doesn't spin webs. It instead relies on excellent eyesight to spot and hunt down small insects. Wolf spiders occasionally find their way indoors by chasing small prey in. They can be identified by a dark, silky body and short, thick legs. They can also easily be coaxed into a glass or container and be let back outside. No need to kill them. And of course, there are the spiders who have adapted to live with us. This long-bodied cellar spider is one such species. They have adapted so well to living in human dwellings that they can no longer survive outside for long. It is also a common myth that they are highly venomous. They are not. Their jaws aren't even strong enough to break through human skin, so there's really no point in killing them. The large European house spider is another spider that is adapted to live with humans. They prefer dark nooks and crannies in basements or around the outside of the house. They're not very aggressive, and much prefer to run than to bite. Males with very long legs can be seen running around the house in late summer looking for females. Last but not least, an arachnid that is often mistaken for a spider, the harvestman or daddy longlegs. All spiders are arachnids, but not all arachnids are spiders. Spiders all have two distinct body segments, 
the cephalothorax, and the abdomen. Harvestmen have a single fused body and have tiny pinchers instead of fangs. They are harmless. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Backyard Critters.